All right, guys, so then welcome back. It's time for game two. Spicy Waffles took game number one of Six Sigma. They're going to be looking to battle their way back and keep their hopes in the first place finish alive for the first time for the Summer Challenger Cup. They made it to the finals, though. They're best showing so far, so still credit and kudos to those guys. Yeah, credit and kudos indeed. They're both working very, very hard to try and establish what they can. Spicy Waffles, though, are the victors so far. And so the victors go with the majority of the spiles. 100 points is available for them if they can win this game over Six Sigma. But Six Sigma, not completely out of it just yet. They can win two in a row to come back. Bands yep. are coming through. And shockingly enough, a Ymir band gets focused out this time by Spicy Waffles. We have seen it many, many times. Bo Bo it was a bit of a rough game last time for Bobasaur, but he's still making very strong, powerful fo uh, showings on it. It's also going to take it out of the hands of Flurry Q, who is not a stranger to him. We actually saw Ninja Bobat pick it up as well earlier, so a lot of potential uh, Ymir players not going to have that option. On the other side, Bologna, Thor removed from the table. We have seen very little Thor play recently. We've seen a few bans, not much play, and even the times he hasn't been banned, no one really picking him up anymore these days, so... I don't know. That's the still weird thing. People just not yeah. picking him up. He he is still ban worthy. He's still a threat, and I don't understand yeah. why people haven't been picking him up as much. I guess people just moving away for the time being with the hunters involved. I don't think it's a big thing. But Athena going to be taken away to the spicy waffles as well. It's going to be interesting to see where Deku Scrub goes with his pick choices here. Geb didn't really seem to work out for him very well last game, mainly because of the early so, rotation coming out from the jungle. But that's yeah. what happens with Geb early. You need to hit that level nine. Otherwise, you're really going to have a rough time. If you get picked before that, it's going to hurt. Yeah, Sylvanas is still available as well. We've seen him play Bacchus a few times in the past, so he's not necessarily a stranger to the you know, non-top-tier Guardians. They have two to pick, though. They have some mid lane options. They have some jungle up. They have, well, they have every option. They haven't picked anybody yet. What am I on about? Sylvanas getting hovered over for now. That would be a support pickup, more likely than not. We haven't really seen Sylvanas anywhere else so far. There was some speculation when he first came out, you know, AoE in hand attacks could be quite decent over in the solo lane, but for the most part, no one really explored that option at the competitive level. Hunbats, though, hovered over, and finally, as both gods do get locked in as that timer ticked on down, that's a jungle, that's a support pickup. Other side, well, uh, well there's Poseidon. Can you, uh, Hinder, are you surprised by seeing Poseidon picked up by Spicy Waffles? I can't say I am. There's an answer opposite of yes. Yeah, th that's my thinking. Sir Cat locked in as well. Uh, gonna be Bobat in the jungle with that one, and hmm, it, it, Sir Cat still quite powerful. We saw how well it can work and spread poison to some people when they stand next to the hunter who has the poison as well. It, it can be hashtag fixes, silly fixes. Yeah. His only death in that game was that poison for the guy. But Vo MBK is gonna be picking up with Jibalonke again. Uh, it could go to him. It could go into the solo lane one more time for Mr. Crunchy. Um, I like the Hubbard's pick up this time. They're gonna go back to a more a different sort of composition. Six Sigma's game plan seems to be double guardian into double hunter. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if they'll shy away from it now that they can't really get the double guardian they were looking for. But maybe they will go for the double hunter still. Yeah, there's a tiny bit of a focus ban there towards Vex as we've seen some good Agni play out of him so far today. Uh, not going to be any change there really this time around, except for the fact that he can't pick the god up. Not... this is the most... it's not just a case of, oh, Poseidon doesn't do well. Agni generally has a slightly dis... Uh, he's at a, like a... it's a 60-40 matchup kind of, I guess what you would say. Poseidon, you drop that Whirlpool down, you can't path the flames through it, you can't path the flames in it, and if you path the flames in its path, it, you'll stop at the edge of it, so... It can it's, set up it's also because some... Ag Agni's, Agni's well known on Fexes. Fexes is Agni's mm -hmm. very, very strong and everyone knows that. So take it away from him. Make him go elsewhere. They seem to not have an issue with his raw last game, even though he did give the tip to Wolfie, which is very, very impressive. I'm not sure if they'll be scared of it this time round again. We'll see. They might just let him go for raw raw. Have to pick something else. Maybe the Yarnus. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Right now, it's looking like Spicy Waffles may be considering a double hunter pickup as Medusa's hovered as is Ul. Both those get locked in. Wouldn't be too surprising in the slightest. We've seen that time and time again. Although Spicy Waffles, not quite so much favoring the whole double guardian, double hunter. They go for the more kind of overall balanced composition. Get that assassin in the jungle as well. To late game, so late game, they can look to actually deal with those hunters in an easier fashion. Not to have to like a hunter versus hunter, guardian versus guardian. Then we have this mid lane mage because, you know, we can't just have no magical damage, period. Both those guys do get locked in. Over to Six Sigma, one more pick for them to grab. It's going to be a mid laner. Double hunters on both sides once again in this final. Mm, going to be interesting to see. I, I want to see what they do with Giannis. Do they go with Giannis here? Do they go... I mean, what else is available? Jean Quay has just been instantly locked in. Interesting. Not someone we've seen a whole lot of. Last time we saw him was actually the beginning of the spring split for the Challenger Cup. Last has pulled him out a couple times, and that was kind of it. Jean is going to offer a lot of AoE damage. He'll have an okay matchup against Poseidon in the mid lane. He has some sustain as well, so any little incidental poke, he'll be okay with. 
The problem could potentially be later on. Yeah, he gets a lot of protections, he's gonna be building health, so he's gonna have a big effective health pool. But Hunters is gonna have a field day just shredding through him once that crit starts to come online. It is, but at the same time, like he's gonna have protection boost as well when he's got his ultimate as well. He's gonna be in the mix and forcing people to focus him. So Cat is a good god against Jean Kui though, because it stops the sustain mm -hmm. that Jean Kui will have for himself because of that last breath. We'll see how this plays out though, because at the moment, on paper, I'm favoring spicy waffles, but Six Sigma's composition, it doesn't look too bad with that Sylvanas and Jean Kui for the front line with the Humbat support. Yep. We'll be back here in just a little bit, guys. We're on the anti ghost timer tick on down. It's going to be Six Sigma facing off against spicy waffles who lead the series one game to nothing. We'll talk to you guys and be back with the game in just a few. All right, guys, well, welcome back. Game number two of the finals for the week three of the European Challenger Cup. It's Spicy Waffles facing off once again against Six Sigma. Spicy Waffles took game number one. It wasn't an, exactly a runaway game until very close to the end. So Six Sigma, their hopes at this one, keeping the series alive, still very much there. Yeah, still very much there, but can they come back into it is the question. The composition here, the double hunter with Fexes on this Jean Kui middle lane. We'll see how this plays out because it's not really often we see Jean Kui used yeah. in the meta at the moment. And it's not like he's a bad god by any stretch of the imagination. But against the Circa and the Kraken, it could be a bit of an issue for him. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that one plays out. The biggest thing, if they can get Fexes a couple early kills in any way, shape, and form, and he gets a bit of a damage spike, Spear of the Magus comes online first, with more, fairly often on Jean Kui. If that gets up early, I'd say probably about the 8-9 minute mark if you can get to that point, he is going to be wrecking those first early gold fear groupings. I mean, Spicy Waffles are going to want it. You want to force those fights, try and get that gold fear for yourself, but with that 6 Sigma lineup, it's going to be a really, really tough call. Yeah, it is going to be a tough call for him. We'll see how this works out. So, no early invade once again. No surprise, because this hunt is involved in the solo lane. So, we don't see an invasion for the blue buffs just yet. This is why I think we might see mages start coming back to sell us if they're running hunters. But, because no one's getting hog, you know? We're yep. not seeing the warriors with the hogs anymore in here, which means mages could end up swinging back this way eventually. Especially the ones that can deal with hunters a little bit more effectively. The likes of Kronos, for example. I think the red team could look for it. The problem then will be if your blue team and you lock in a mage for the soul lane, they just pick up war and then you're back into that kind of end of season one, beginning of season two situation. It's like, well, mages don't do well against the warriors of the hog, and that's exactly what I, we're up against now. So that did not work out too well for us. Bobasura, though, making a rotation over to that mid lane. Not really going to be able to find a kill here into Wolfie. Just going to soak up some experience with this farm. wave. Pretty much. That's all he's there for. Really, yeah. is the farm. If he gets an opportunity, he'll go for it. Left side, though, Flowey Q and Bushy. Getting poked down a little bit by Deku and Vo MBK there. Not to be surprised. Obviously, Sylvana Shibalonke, definitely the stronger composition than Athena Medusa. Although, once they hit five, things can kind of twist around on that one. Solo. <laughs> I thought we were going to see the axe land then, but quick roll. Quick roll is all good. Little back and forth. Game Hunter there for a moment. May have forgotten the fact that Rom, with the Astral Arrows toggled on, can in fact shoot through minions, so body blocking doesn't necessarily work out in your favor. How about with that? It's a little back and forth. The potion is ticking away. No real sustain on either one. They did both start Bluestone Pendant. So if one of them can force the other out of lane, they that's why you have one handedly, but yeah, it's a bit of disadvantage losing what will end up being a full wave of minions to the tower. But for two minutes in, both the mid laner and the jungler is going to be going back to their respectable jungles and clear out the last RP camp back there, ready for the mid lane wave and ready for hitting level 5. But already, we're going to see Ninja Bobat rotate to the left hand side and maybe look for a potential pick here. He's not going to hit level 5 even if he gets a full minion wave here, but with the support of Flowey Q, they're going to go in on Daku. The taunt into the Cobra's Kiss, into all the damage, it's ticking down, the health bar is dropping, but Body can blocking. they secure it? Body blocking is so decay. good. You don't see AD carries do that in casuals. You don't usually see it in a league no. play either. This level, you expect it in Vote MBK. Just kept first blood on the table for his team to potentially look for it down the road. He did, but that's going to put Savannah in a bit of a tricky situation for mid harp. He's in 30 seconds time. He should be able to reach in a little bit, but he's not got any health potions. He went mana potions and wards, which means he's relying only on his wisps. And one more taunt could spell dividends. And there it is. Oh, he's Ooh. going to get out just in time. Tom was a little bit out of reach. Yeah, Bushy. pulling him back into the damage. Bushy just had no mana. If Lacerate had been up and available, Deku Scrub would have gone down for first blood there. But without it, like you said, mid Harpies not may not see Deku Scrub have much of an effect on this right side. Mr. Crunchy, very low in health, actually tanking up some minions, trying to save as much gold from that tower as possible. Right side Harpy is going to go very quickly over to uh, Bobasura on that Humbats. Left side, Spicy Waffles are nearby. They're looking for that They're looking for Deku. Rub. They found him. They found him. He's totally dead here. Athena's actually going to go all in as well to get the assist and actually the kill for Flowey Q. But here's Vado Evil. And if Fexas can do Recall. work with those ghosts, which he's doing, this could turn the fire around tremendously. Wolfie's going to fall. But can they find more? 
Flurry Q is going to be dead to rights right here. Ninja Boba's going to need some really big plays. Actually, Bushy's return. Petrify nice. catches Bulbasaura. Got to sweep on in. Boba picks up that kill, but can he now get it alive? He's Sir Cat. He's out of mana. Got to... <laughs> The hog. The hog was Take good. It. He's juking. He's juking. But he's not juking for much because he's going to jump straight into Faxes and give him the kill instead. That was a crazy engagement for a two for two engagement. Guess what? The harpies are still standing and nobody even realizes it. So much going on. Who has time to remember harpies are still up? Eventually, someone will look at the mini map and say, oh, hey, those are still there. Let me go clear the timer. Oh, hey, they're actually still there. Unless Flurky <laughs> walks around this corner and actually checks. Yes, there they is. are. Nice little present for. No, no, no maybe. Yeah, yeah, he might right. get caught. There though. we go. He's going to keep an eye on Deku. He's keeping yeah. an eye on Deku. Is the issue here? He's going to use the hog and get out in time. So it works out nicely for him. Just boil himself some time with the preemptive strike. And you can see the gold experience lead. The gold is in favor of spicy experiences in Six Sigmas because of how the harpies and things went. Uh, but yeah, pretty much an all tra all square trade between the two. Yep. A little bit of an edge right now though for Faxes. He was a part of both those kills and actually got both of them as well. So it's a nice little gold spike plus experience spike. He's sitting even with top levels in the game right now. Wolfie a little bit further on experience from him, but he's going for that Doom Orb. So that burst damage from him is going to be pretty massive here in the very near future. But we saw that fight, a couple guys grouped up, Recall Demons came out and Faxes was just doing work, shredding apart those health bars. It's early. He's sitting up top of the chart for the time being. At least for a good long while before those hunters come online, he's likely going to remain there. Yeah, for the time being, he definitely will remain there as well. I mean, he's quite effective with the god that he's actually got here. Fex says, we'll do a lot of damage and dot damage too, just by throwing out the card in a big right team side. side. Very effective. Right, right side, they're going to go for the gun. In trouble. Ninja Bob might have secured that kill with the help of all up in the air oh, now. Rom trying to dead. stay alive, but... He's going to buy time for Rolling Assault. Bobatch is waiting. Wolfie, no, no Rolling Assault. Sorry, Crunchy. Oh, Wolfie, though. Actually, Sir Cat forced Maybe with Fexes really. here. Maybe he can turn this one around again. Crunchy will go on to a Kraken in the end. And Fexes ate some of that, too. And now with Athena there on Flurry Q, Fexes is going to run away with the ghost spouting out his backside. You can see Deku tried to make the rotation a little bit too late. Not going to be as quick as an Athena. And Spicy Waffles extend the lead dramatically very, very quickly. Athena is a god very easy to forget in the middle of a team by the fact that she she doesn't have to be there. Defender of Olympus suddenly gets used and suddenly, oh, this 3v3 is a 3v4 and the Defender of Olympus did a whole bunch of damage and helped secure a kill on somebody. For a moment there, it looked like Ninja Bobat had just really got overcommitted to chasing down that kill. But when Athena arrived, you know, the taunt came in, the damage from the Defender of Olympus, the extra protections, it paid off in the end there to turn that into a couple kills. Deku had she... needs to be careful. Oh, sorry, yeah. I thought Deku's got a lazy back there, which could have got him caught out of position a little bit. He's actually going to eat a nice little bit of poke damage from Ninja Boba again. But with Wisps now on cooldown, Harpies are up on the right in a second, and Spicy Waffles know it. So no, they don't, because Ninja Boba just walked past him and didn't even notice. <laughs> Goodbye, Ninja Boba. It's okay, but we're sorry on you. Back on that was, that was share. kind of weird. Uh, I'll be honest, that was cool and weird at the same time. They, they wanted back harpies. They were there. That, that was the call was made. And it's like, we're, we're committed to the call, guys. It's important. Listen to the calls. Fear no evil mid lane drop down. Looking for this pick here. Can they find it, though? Bobasaur is okay. Going to survive the overall engagement. Force uses ultimate defensively there, though. That's not a great situation. It's a big team fight ultimate that's not going to be there now for about two minutes. Yeah, I mean, but two minutes' time, I don't see a golf here going to happen anytime soon for the mo moment because everybody's still on eggshells. Spicy Waffles are winning the engagements, but actually, Six Sigma, they look like they're grouping for the golf here. They can look oh, for just they... to clear the ward out. I think they just went to group up and make sure they supply each other for the ward placement more than anything because they didn't exactly know where the hunter was and they didn't know where the jungler was in the duo. If they can manage to f avoid the majority of a Poseidon and Kraken coming out from Wolfie, the Recall Demons, it's not a case of I use it and it, it works. Blink, work. taunt. Do do. Blink, taunt on an Athena support? It's, why not? That, that worked. It worked. He guessed they didn't feel like they're going to need anything other than that. No. Blink, taunt from Flurry Q. That's not something you see in an Athena. No. This, if this, if they can close this game out probably in the next 10, 15 minutes, that'll be a nice pickup. Recall Demons coming out. They're looking for this pick. Ninja Bobat, very low. Going to be able to ambush away, but gets picked off oh, by the Poison bad. Dart damage from Vote MBK. Gold Fury, though. Wrong graph up on screen. Did go over to Spicy Waffles in that engagement. So, overall victory to those guys. Yeah, okay, we That's lost Bobat. We won overall because we got the Gold they, Fury. They lost Boba for a Gold Fury, so I'm okay with that as well. I mean, on the right hand side of things, though, you do see how it's going in this lane. Mr. Crunchy has managed to push down Game Hunter's tower, so for, sorry, Lion, Game Hunter has managed to push down Mr. Crunchy's tower, so he's got a bit more freedom in this lane to roam around and try and support in mid lane when it was required. And uh, that was a nice pickup from the Gold Fury there from Spicy Waffles. They did, but they needed to secure mm -hmm. it quickly. That 
blinked on. I've never ever seen an Athena with blinked on just because of preemptive strike. It's a yeah. it's an odd pickup. But it's it, similar. Obviously, it works. But yeah, it's, it's similar to Odin. You have the preemptive strike, but as soon as, soon as it's charged, you you know it's this big long one. You get it as it winds up. It's like okay, she could potentially dash forward and hit us. We need to make sure we're far enough away. With blink. It's instantaneous. You don't know if she has a charge up, she's charging, she make noise with it, doesn't worry about it. Blink forward, taunt, you're stuck. You then preempt the strike as well for a slow in the back of it, you're not using it as an initiation tool. It's similar to Odin in that regard, it's like, you know, the bird bomb into a ring of spears is like really telegraphed ability. Blink ring of spears, it's like, boom, it's there, shoot, now we're stuck in this thing. So similar idea, you get that taunt off and set yourself up for a little bit more follow up. The potential problem. I mean, it's, always, it's it's always about like what other things you could get. I mean, we exactly. can is an option to stop the sustain could have Sylvanas and from Jean Cree and the Hunters too. Right side though, Game Hunters trading off with Mr. Crunchy, and here comes Boba with that fear. Sorry, not Boba, Boba Sora with that fear. No evil, and the reengage is here. Yeah. And it's Boba Sora in trouble. Locked down rain for uh, Astral Barrage from the sky coming down. Flurry Q very low. Fax is trying to chase down the last ghost. Yes. He's not going to find one. Yeah, not will. the other one. Bobak gets out. Wolfie finds the kill on the Bobasaur on the other side of the fight. As now Game Hunter looking to run away. They grab a little far off. Wolfie is still in the middle of this one right now. Getting closed in on Bobash just waiting nearby trying to do what he can. He has to be careful. Yeah, he does have to be careful. Wolfie's surrounded by many. His crack is already down. The title surge will buy him a second, but not long enough to survive Mr. Crunchy's in-hand damage. And he will fall to the wayside too, making a two-for-one engagement. That was semi-initiated there by Spicy Waffles. They didn't pay off, and Game Hunter, the initiator, is still alive. He's trying to make it worthwhile, though, on Deku, but he doesn't realize Fax says he's coming. He will now. He is. He could look at this quick kill. Not going to be able to hit the Hail of Arrows. It's going to be an overall survival for the engagement for both members involved with that one. Texas saving the day for Deku's group as otherwise Game Hunter likely would have been able to secure that kill. Left hand lane while this is all going on. Bushy able to get some free farm over there in that lane. He's still pretty much sitting even a little bit of a gold advantage. A lot of that is just from that gold free pickup a little while ago. But really nothing, no big advantage standing out right now. Bushy is lacking slightly in sustain department as he picked up beforehand on Vote MBK. He's going to stick around, you know, against the, uh, Medusa as well. You're going to take some incidental poke from that acid spray, so it's nice to have it early. So, seven is in, seven to five. Red buff gets dropped down, given over to Wolfie again in the middle lane. Build wise, we can see the Heart Seekers once again and all the Hunters involved in this one. Doom Mob still online for Wolfie and stacking once again after his second death. So, he's up to about 34 stacks after that wave now, but left Harpies are available. And Six Sigma are the ones in position looking to try and pick these ones up for themselves. Six Sigma are holding on nicely in this game, but they're still trailing in Golden Experience right now. It's uh, the past three, four minutes or so, it's kind of, nothing's really gone on all that much. A couple back and forth kills, but no real big advantage to the team. But, oh, a nice pick on to Bobasaur. Will kind of set up a potential further team fight. Bobat going to ambush over the wall back to safety. Has Deathbane in reserve if needed. Athena going to join the fight as well. A rational barrage from Rom. Is it going to be long enough range? One, just one more shot in reserves. Nice Not going to actually fart off. I don't it think he realized Flurky was that low. But yeah, I don't think you can find him. Game one is in a big old mix there. I don't think he really wanted to be there. The slows are really hurting. The dot damage of poison plus the card is enough to actually bring him down. Fex has get himself another kill with the exposed evil. And now they're going to pressure on mid lane if they want to. Mr. Crunchy will get some free farm. And potentially that tower back in the solo. Yeah, that'll definitely help things out. Game Hunter will be a little... Oh, well, that was a Game Hunter will be less free to rotate around. But Mr. Crunchy will then be able to rotate around freely as he so pleases. And it, it, it kind of follow Game Hunter across the map or rotate on his own. Athena's on her way. But the full minion wave plus a couple extra archers plus Mr. Crunchy. We're going to make pretty reasonably short work of this tower. The Athena's trying... You can try and stick to, to the tower and take it down. Is he going to be able to do so? Flurky might barely save it. He's going to go for it. It's going to go down. He can kill it. He can kill it. Oh, oh. Can he kill it? Body blocks. Body blocks. Pooped on Mr. The Crunchy. Pooped on. Doesn't manage to get the tower. Flurky does defend for one more wave at least. And the yeah. worst thing is Bobat's <laughs> actually hanging in the area here. So Mr. Ooh. Crunchy could die because of his decision to stick around. The bees have been used. Then the ultimate. Oh my goodness. He threw him in to it. But he's still going to live for another poison ticks. And there's a heal coming out, but Game Hunter is on his way. Wolfie over the wall with the whip, but we'll secure him. Bobat's in trouble here, though. He's going to go down to the ghosts. The grab. And the pull from Daku was huge. Yep, that's going to be another kill on the Fexus. Cleaning up with that double kill, sitting 6 1 and 2 right now on that Jean Kui. Mentioned it earlier, if Fexus can really get going, that's where the Magus comes online. That's going to be the real point of him just starting to wreck face in team fights. And he has that online. That one was a little scared, it wasn't a proper you know, in the middle of causing damage to everybody all the time. But nevertheless, another two kills on the board for him. He's just going to be getting that much more ahead, that much more quickly. Mid lane, Wolfie. Bulbasaur survives the burst. Yeah, he does. I mean, he jumps in and initiate, but it's Fexas with the exorcism damage. That is really working out well for Six Sigma here. It's all on Fexas.
Look it, at him, seven, one, and two. He's like, yeah, the he's, beast. He's been everywhere. He's getting these kills. He's getting online very, very quickly. Hunters are really not going to be able to deal with him. Defend Olympus as well as a blink coming in, trying to deter and stop this gold fury. Will force the reset. Fex is going to find a double stun in that instance, as well as a little incidental follow-up damage. He's, He's on 12 player damage at 13 minutes in the game. Yeah. 12,000 player damage already on this Jean Cui. I mean, granted, he's got great team fight potential, but he shouldn't be given the opportunity to get in there and do as much as he's doing. But he's doing work so far for Six Sigma and actually bringing this game back into their favor, at least in experience wise. Gold, another story, and they have to really secure this next Gold Fury. The biggest thing comes down to the extra protections from his passive that they then get doubled as he uses that recall demons. He doesn't have any health items online yet, but when he's coming, he's not there for the beginning of the fight. He waits for the fight to start. You wait for the big ultimates coming down. Wolfie used a Kraken. The, if you can get the patch fry out before, it's like, okay, the big stuff is down. I can now go forward into the fight. I don't have to worry about being burst down instantly. A little over time damage, I'm not worried about right now because I have the recall demons coming out. I can use my exorcism for a heal in the middle of the fight. And I will be able to just wreck face while they're left like, well, we now really can't deal with this guy. We have to run away back off while the rest of the team looks to chase him down and pick them off while they're trying to make a retreat. Well, Spicy want to do the Gold Fury. There is Bulbasaur there with that Fear No Evil waiting in the wings, getting to get toyed early by Flurry Q. They're not going to find the place. Oh, the Blink initiation wasn't the greatest from Deku. He hit too, but he ate a Kraken. So it's a trade in ultimates for a trade in ultimates so far. Jean Cui still has his, though. Fexer still has it. And he's actually stacking in mid lane as the reset has begun. Game Hunter might spot him here, but Game Hunter needs to be careful because that's a tanky guy. Gold Fury, back off! Goes to Spicy Waffles in the middle of this one. The fight is fully committed around. Ninja Bobak going to ambush over the back of that wall and survive. Deacon Scrub falls to the poison. He's not going to be spreading that one around. Game Hunter cleaning up back in the, in the back. Fex is answering back as Athena joins back up. Her health bar is low. If Fex finds a stun, somebody will die. Game Hunter, or Mr. Crunchy rather, not able to find those snipes to secure a kill. Shout out to Blink. Shout out to Blink Athena. Saves the day. Yep. He blinked away from the engagement. Bushy wants to get involved in trying to steal away the buff, but he might actually get rolled on instead from Mr. Crunchy, the double hunter against Bushy. He has to lacerate away. Game Hunter, what are you doing, oh, Game Hunter? No, no. no. I said, bye, Game Hunter. Get away. You're all. We've seen him do many, many, many things outnumbered, oh. but as low as your health mana bar was, don't do now. it. Yeah, he is. No, he's not. The card no. missed. He's going to leap over. He's going to juke around the yeah, tower, but two hunters collapsing from either side. Yes, he will go down. Mr. Crunchy securing that kill and actually making the gold difference. Sorry, the gold lead still in Spicy Waffle's favor, but experience still even. It's definitely a bit close. When the Gold Fury has still given Spicy Waffles a bit of a backup. You saw it before that, though. Six Sigma were doing a pretty good job finding little picks, finding a decent bit of extra farm to get themselves sort of back towards even. We're back up just below the highest gold lead in the game, going the way of Spicy Waffles for now. As things continue, though, we've seen a couple messy team fights, and we're getting to the point in the game where the Hunters are starting to come online more. It's not going to necessarily be a free runabout for Faxes in these fights. The Hunter, yeah, you chase down a Hunter, they have that lifesteal. The, 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 Jean Cui isn't a lot of burst damage. When that Assy kicks him, it's a lot of extra lifesteal for these Hunters. They're going to be able to kind of tank back and forth a little bit, dish out a little bit of extra damage before they fall. And Jean Cui's not going to have that lifesteal to answer back, so he's going to come out a little worse for war, even if he does find the Hunter in the end. And then he's in a spot where he's probably not going to survive too much longer. 11 to 12. And everybody's just gone back to farming right on side, though we might see Ninja Boba look for Mr. Crunchy, but he's backing away safely after taking that out down game hunter will be able to restack after his recent death as those right harpies are being contested by both teams here at the moment looks like six sigma should win that battle especially with that brute force giant that his fex says on that jean queen on the yeah. front line right now working on that warlock slash next more than likely or ethereal stuff hmm. There's some options there available. The way this game is going, Warlock Sash, it's about 50 or so stacks where it's equal with the Ethereal Staff. The big thing from that is, is Ethereal gives you 600 health straight away. It lacks a little bit more in damage as the game continues, however. So it's like a back and forth situation. Do I want to wait and build up those stacks, or do I want the extra health now just so I'm that tanky monster? And with Jean Kui, the effect of health when you're sitting up around 50% damage reduction because of Recall Demons and your passive. Oh, left. It's, uh... You're going to see an engagement between the two Hunters. It looked like Vote MBK wide Bushy's hide, but he's not going to find it. All he found was the tail <laughs> slinking away from Lacerate. So, Olmet is down. But yeah, you're right. I mean, the, the Warlock Slash versus Ethereal Staff is one of those trade-offs. Are you going to buy enough time to get those 100 stacks online is the question um, before you get to a team fight that you really need that extra health that you bought it for in the first place. Yeah. Like I said, the extra protections coming out, the overall effect of health pool, you're, he's going to be sitting at a 50% damage reduction, so that 600 health is effectively 1200 health. It, it, there's a penetration, there's other math involved with it, but it's a lot of extra just because it's John Quay. 
With that, <laughs> both sides looking for ganks on the left hand side. Bobasaur and Deku's waiting behind the wall. Bobat waiting behind the wall. They're gonna go for Bunny BK, but the response is there immediately. Yeah, but Bushy's really, really low. But Sorry, Deck is trying to bring him down with auto attacks. Not going to find it though. Very well, MBK will fall down to the poison. And now with the fear, no evil there from Bobo. Sorry, he's looking to re-secure Doja Boba. But to the sky with the snipes. The Jukes one doesn't shoot the second one from Mr. Crunchy. Blink from Flowey Q gets him out of dodge. And that becomes a one-for-one -one trade. But guess what's happening in the right lane? Yeah, there was a or there is a tier two tower currently being taken down. Unlike last time with Mr. Crunchy with that tier 1 tower, there's nobody there to body block those shots. That's 1,500 more gold in the bank of spicy waffles due to the efforts of Game Hunter with that split push. Good call from Six Sigma though to try and push down tier 1 in mid lane though. Open the map up a little bit. Wolfie's there though to defend. So they may still get it though. Yeah. And they will to turn it around left side though. Daku's in trouble. No, he's not. He's going to back away because they think they saw Boba coming in. No, they didn't. They just backed away. It, it, you know, look at that gold graph. Every single time Six Sigma find the six sigma are finding these little kills little picks little tiny you know out farm type things and then suddenly spice wolf is like oh we got a gold fury we got a tower we got a tier two tower we got the second gold fury it's like these big jumps that constantly are gradually slowly but surely putting spice waffles further and further ahead so, so at some point in time spice waffles can hit that point it's like well you know what? we're at the point we can team fight comfort comfortably we're not just going to get the objective. We're going to get a couple kills and then get the objective and not let you get this little incidental farm on the back of things. Once that starts to happen, if that if it does start to happen, Six Sigma are going to start losing that little bit of, you know, they have, there's a slow bleed going to Six Sigma, but Spicy Waffles just keep taking chunks of flesh out of the body of Six Sigma. Up. Oh. Dane to 12, 20 minutes in. The gold kills is definitely in favor of Six Sigma, but the goldies are not. 5,000 gold lead right now. And that is actually going to start making an impact, honestly, between these two teams. But the gold fuse has been started by Six Sigma here, but Bushy is in the area. And they're not going to be able to find the pick that they're wide to. But that gold will start making more of an impact in terms of actives, in terms mm -hmm. of almost an item ahead for almost every player eventually. Yep, it definitely will. For now, not quite that at that point yet. Malice is online for Circuit. Ninja Bobat so far has had a pretty good effect in these team fights. Five, five, and six. We've seen a couple Circuits so far today. Uh, I think this is the second time in a row so far with uh, was it Bobat last time as well? But nevertheless, uh, this is really the first effective Circuit play we've seen. A couple other games, she really wasn't making a good show and wasn't really able to get going early. Bobat not the case this time around, having a pretty big impact on these fights, coming in, doing a lot of damage, and getting back out alive. Not in all cases, but reasonably enough often. Look at the damage chart, though. You can see Fex is still sitting handily up at the top, but Hunter's starting to come online. You can see Vote MBK right on his heels. Yep, they will come online. And it's getting to the, so, towards that stage of the game, it's going to be about what Fex has can do in terms of getting more itemization online for himself. He needs to try and finish off this Warlock Sash or after real stuff. Even Gem of Isolation, if he wants to as well, mm -hmm. to try and cause more issues for the enemy team to have to get away and allow his Haunters the time to do the work. And the best thing is they need to focus him down in the team fights or run away from him, which is going to buy his Haunters the time they need to um, get their damage out and put the pressure on. Yep, so the ward battle over the Gold Fury is well on. No more sentry wards in hands for Spicy Waffles. Bobat picking up one right now. So Six Sigma will maintain vision control over there for the time being. Vote MBK, seeing Flurry can go back to base, is going to start this one off and try to solo it down. Going to try and sneak it in, but you can see Bushy already rotating him just to make sure this isn't being snuck in right now. He's going to spot it and force the reset once again. Defender Olympus, they might not mm, let that actually reset. He's, they're going to go for it. Coming over. Yeah. yeah, this could be a false fight here, Bushy Belonky going to have to use the... Darkest of nice to try and disengage, but there's some nice damage coming blinking from Deku's Scrub a little bit early. The Gold Fury's still getting lower. It's still not down yet. Fair no evil comes out. Hog. The Gold Fury goes to Six Sigma, and the fight is going to Six Sigma 2. This is that big play they need. Gold, you know, we kept saying these big chunks that Spice Officers took out. Well, Six Sigma just took back a chunk of their own, and look where they are running right now. They took down the Athena. They're going to go straight for that Fire Giant. This, If they can get this right now, it'll be a huge play, but the remaining members of Spicy Waffles are going to three. stop this. They don't have Hog 3. Hog 3 is on cooldown for a long time. Deku used it last time, and here comes Bushy. Deku's in a bad spot. Wolfie secures it with that Kraken. The rest of the damage coming out. Bulbasaur doing a lot of work in the backside of his health bar is dropping rapidly. Vote MBK very, very low. Bulbasaur finds one. Bushy answers straight on back. Vote MBK finds the kill from Game Hunter, but will be answered back immediately. Big play call coming out from Six Sigma. The damage coming in. That burst damage on Kra off the Poseidon Fax. and everything else. Two shot, third shot. Nah, oh, wait. Fexes, Fexes. Oh, oh, the oh, oh. 
The no, dog. not going to find it. Bushy tried to make the play. He had no real escape there. He had to avoid the snipes, hugging the wall. Nearly made it out in one piece. But oh, blinking from Flurry Q. Oh, no, that's a, that's a Rama. That's a Rama. I did not want to be there. He disengaged yeah. immediately. That was not affects his low in health trying to lazy back. He was, still, he was a little bit further away backing. He was just far enough away. This game, this game Sig is close. I, I like the call for the fire giant from Six Sigma. They just did not turn around quick enough. A couple of the guys, Deku Scrub got like caught it. in the middle of that. If they had turned me as soon as they, if they had a ward, right before the right like side the harpy pit, it could have been. Why, good. why would you? But bait why would you try and do golf here when you're not? Yeah, bait, bait the golf here, not do yeah. the golf here. This yeah. is the difference. Like, it was split. Bait the golf here, fine. But do the golf here when you've not got hog three. I'm not down for that. <laughs> it's it's exactly. too dangerous. The risk is too high. Both your hogs were down. And you tried to do the golf fury, and you didn't get as much out of it as you wanted to. Now you're trying to do it again with Ninja Boba and Flurry Q being in the area and the response coming through. This is risky. It is Ninja Bobat's nearby, sitting in the ambush, just like, I'm, I'm here, I know you guys are nearby, they're still going at it right now, Fire Giant down just below 50% right now, if they can see, get this one in this time around, it will be a nice pickup to blow the threshold, 6-7 will secure it this time around, but can they win the ensuing team fight? will be very low, gonna get picked up, go to Fexes. Good fight for Six Sigma, this one indeed, and they do get the goal for the Fire Giant, sorry, for themselves, Flurry Q having to run away with the rest he can but he's still going to go down lacerated ended bushy he's looking for damage with the petrified we're going to get hit by a fair no evil and with his beats still being on cooldown i believe after that last engagement he'll drop quickly to the wayside six sigma going to start immediately pushing down this right hand lane looking for a phoenix and a good call from game hunter here just to back up and push in mid lane and keep them busy and try and distract them if they don't go back and one person defend which they should he could potentially get a phoenix yeah, at the same time, there's a couple of members still on respawn for quite a while. If he sticks around the mid lane, they could potentially look to stray for the Titan and try and end it, but it would be a risky call. Wolfie's up in 15, Flurky's up in a few more. Get a couple of towers, take that easy gold. They're sitting on a decent chunk as well. Rom almost 3,000, about 1,000 to 2,000 across everybody else. So they're going to look to take this towers down. I think this is a smarter call all across the board. That first fire giant attempt, I, it, they were looking for the bait. They really had no potential, like I said, no wrath of the gods online. The problem was when they finally, when the remaining members of Spicy Waffles showed up, Deku and one of the members like, okay, we'll, f we'll zone you guys out, and then Deku's group just got evaporated by Poseidon, and then it's like, hey, you know, we have to actually deal with this, and by that point, the fight was already kind of lost because people were just dying across the board. Second time around, with those respawn times still in their favor, Six Sigma was able to sneak it in. It was a little messy, a tiny bit messy, but the respawns worked in their favor. They now have the Fire Giant buff across the entire team, got a couple towers, got a Phoenix already. And they still have two and a half minutes to play with. Well, Six Sigma are looking pretty good right now. They've got themselves to the final for the first time, and they're showing why they deserve to be there right yep. now with how they're playing in this game. Fex says in the front line, most of this game has been doing absolute work. 10, 1, and 9 for himself. And now they're going to start to siege down this left hand lane for these last remaining towers. Game Hunter busy on the right dealing with those fire minions coming in and the pings went on to him just then Zlatan, which means they know he's not here for this fight so they can get both of these towers yeah he's going back to base you can see spicy waffles not even thinking about defending that tier two it falls almost immediately there was no chance in hell that one was staying alive the phoenix now threat it's a full five-man grouping for spicy waffles if deacon's crop can find a nice blink wrath of terror initiation much like that he's only going to find one but it's beads immediately recall demons is out fex is looking to dish out that damage yeah, look, it's a damage. Fex is actually on zoning duty more than often than not with yeah. those ghosts. They didn't do much work and they can quickly recall back to base, but the Phoenix falls. And Spicy Waffles are up against it now. They've only got one Phoenix remaining. They want to try and engage again. Knowing that Fex doesn't have the damage potential, Bushy is going to force this engagement. Where's a Kraken in the ton? Oh my god, he's getting destruction, but the Fire Giant is paying off as Bobasaur goes in. Crunchy finds another one. The health bars across both teams are dropping rapidly. Wolfie in the front line taking up a lot of it. Deku scrub very low, as is Crunchy. Game Hunter cleaning up in the backside of this fight. Finds the double kill, the triple kill this coming out as over. well. That was a defense these guys over. very much needed. That's the fire giant buff removed. Like you said, it came down to Texas having the no recall demons. He was the one keeping that entire team at bay. And with recall demons down, the entire team still alive. They didn't care they had extra stats on the Fire Giant. They went for it, they found a good Petrify initiation and cleaned up house afterwards. Wolfie landed a beautiful crack in the middle of that fight. That's a Phoenix in mid lane. And that's yeah. an important Phoenix in mid lane too because the right one is going to get defended by Wolfie. That should respawn before anybody can get there to try and backdoor it and deal with it. So you're going to get a respawn Phoenix in the right lane. They're going to drop a Phoenix in the middle lane. And this game has opened way back up again. Six Sigma there should have just fully disengaged. They got the Phoenix, but they hung in the jungle. Yeah. They hung in the jungle and they shouldn't have done. The hang in the jungle cost them and allowed Spicy Waffles for a small opportunity that they developed hugely. Yeah. I, I got what they were going for. They were waiting for 
put the cooldowns to come back up. They hang around for a minute. Just kind of keep them at their base. Stop them from getting any more farm because you know, the fire minions aren't, aren't yet spawning yet. They're not going to be pushing towards the base. You keep them at bay for a little while. The problem then became they had all the ultimates still available. Spicy Waffles didn't burn anything in that defense initially. Mm -hmm. Had I mean, they the been able the big key right now with how this is going to stand is the fire minions are going to respo stop spawning the right lane at the same time as the fire giant comes up. Mm -hmm. And they've still got left lane to deal with. So you can see Game Hunters over here pushing this now. But the rest of the team need to get war coverage down as well as push out these fire minions so they don't just lose this phoenix over again momentarily. At the same time, fire giant is going to spawn. Engagement on Wolfie forces beats. That's a big one to have down before the fight even commences. That means a Blink Breath of Terror on Wolfie will end quite poorly for him because you will be stuck in that for a couple brief moments. They have additional follow-up as well. They're zoning out Six Sigma. Want this fight at this point in time because they have all those ultimates available. They don't want to see a repeat of that last time. Spicy oh. Waffles... Rough of Terrors on cooldown 2 is the big key there as well. That's yeah. going to be done for a few more seconds. Look 50 more seconds as Fex has played around with Ninja Boba a little bit. Like you said, Game Hunter doing a good job here. Gets Fire Minions pushing this lane in. And maybe they lose the Fire Giant here. I don't think it's a good call to go. They're going to have to fight it, really. But Game Hunter's not going to be there. This is risky. Flurky is winning by the right. Dingo Jump zoning out. Fire up. Giant's about to fall. Flurky is going He's for gonna it. Gonna this is still not going to come gonna out find that him. one. He will die for it too. But what's happening on the left-hand side? Meanwhile, Mr. Crunchy has taken down Flurry Q. Game Hunter is still pushing this left-hand lane in. Mr. Crunchy's going to be the one to recall and defend Bobat out of position. Means they're probably going to lose this Phoenix here as well. Yep. Unless Bushy and Wolfie do some amazing, unpredictable thing. Game Hunter is really looking for that Phoenix though. He is training back as well. Phoenix is helping out. He's going to find it. Can he find the kill as well? Mr. Crunchy now on the defensive, trying to run around the Assy Lifesteal coming to play. They Hail misses and they trade. Boba, what's Boba doing? Boba's gone for the end. Is Boba going for the end here? The defense is working though, back at the base at the moment. The ghosts are doing work from Fex as the Titan is slowly being to fall. It's not low enough just yet to end this game and call it a day, but Wolfie is doing what he can. The title surge will knock him back out of range. It's 100%. still dropping 20%. It's going to go down and Six Sigma take the game of Spicy Waffles in a very exciting way to end it. If Boba were to come back, I think they could have defended. I think they could have defended again. Yeah, the health bars were very, very low. Did I couldn't see before the everything disconnected. If Bobat still had that last breath, it was it was either used and already or not used and off cooldown, or just about to come back up. If he had been back at base with that last breath coming in, it would have forced them off the Titan if absolutely nothing else. And I mean, six segment though. If you'd asked me before this game, looking back, um, what was it? The semifinals. They lost that one fight at the Gold Fury back in the semifinal matchup, and it's like, eh. They kind of shut down after that for a little while. I would have expected going to game two that you know they would have been playing very, very defensively, kind of like just you know, shut down almost on the back of losing game one. They didn't. Game two, they came back strong, and like you said earlier on, showed that this was not just a fluke getting through to the finals. They took a team off of Spicy Waffles, or took a game rather, off of Spicy Waffles, and they did. Yeah, made a good showing in the process of doing it. And let's see expects, how they can do but... the next one, guys. We'll be back very, very quickly in this next game as the guys are already ready to go. We'll be back shortly.